Hey, what's going on everybody? So in this video, we're gonna be connecting a custom domain name to a Django application here. So if you're part of my Udemy series with the Django and React course, uh, I'm just gonna add this as another video, but I also wanted to make sure that I can just upload this as a YouTube video for everybody to see. So for those of you guys that are not part of this video in my course, if you wanna check that out, you can go ahead and uh, check that out on Udemy. I'll link that up in the video description. Uh, but we have a project here that we deployed to Heroku. So we have this application here and Heroku gives us a custom domain. And what we wanna do is add in a custom domain like this. So for the demo, I have buildproshop.com and you can actually check that out. That's a live URL here, but we wanna go away from this default domain name that Heroku gives us and we wanna actually purchase a domain and then connect it to our Heroku application. So for this, we're gonna need a domain name registrar or it's a registrar or I forgot how to pronounce that, but uh, there's a lot of different ones and I'm gonna use Heroku or uh, GoDaddy for this. So I just pulled up an article here. So here's a bunch of different ones you can use, but one of my preferences is GoDaddy for this process. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna buy a domain name on GoDaddy. So we'll go to GoDaddy and then we're gonna connect it to our Django application. So if you haven't deployed an application yet, you'll need to do that. And if you're not part of the Udemy course, I actually have a video that I'll also link up to on YouTube on how to deploy an application, uh, a Django application to Heroku. So again, if you're not part of the course, just go ahead and check that video out, make sure you deploy your application, and then we'll just continue on from there from our deployed application. So the first thing we wanna do, let's go ahead and just get started, is we wanna make sure that we have a GoDaddy account because that is what we're using here. So I created a fresh GoDaddy account for this video and we need to purchase a domain name. So uh, the domain name I'm using for my demo is buildproshop.com. So what I'll do here is I'll actually just buy a new domain and then we'll go to, go ahead and just connect it. So let's just try, uh, let's just do pro shop and then we'll just do maybe demo. Let's see if that works. So proshopdemo.com and eventually I'm just gonna get rid of this domain or just connect it. So it doesn't really matter what that is. Okay, so that's available, proshopdemo.com and I guess I can probably just redirect it to buildproshop.com after the video. So from here, once you have your GoDaddy account, go ahead and add that to a cart and I'll just go through this process. I'll just set that for a year. We'll lower, lower the price here. Uh, a domain is gonna cost us about 13 bucks for the year. We're buying it, but in a sense, we're kind of renting it. So let's go ahead and just continue to cart. Let's go through this process and let's see. So I don't need any protection here, so I'll just leave that. I don't need a site builder and I don't need any add-ons here. So right now, I think I'm, a, I'm still at $12. And let's see, so $12.99 and let's just go ahead and go to checkout. So I'm gonna blur out some of this information or I'll just skip through it, but I'll just need to add in my credit card information, my city and so on. And then once you go through this process, I'll just see you in the next step. Okay, so I'll just make sure to blur out my billing information. So right now after taxes and fees, I'm at 1428 and I'm just gonna complete the purchase and I'm using uh, the PayPal option so I didn't even need to add in a credit card or a debit card here. So, okay, so we have our domain and let's just go back to GoDaddy. So I wanna find my domain now. So in here, I can just go to, uh, let's see, I can go to my profile. I'll make sure to blur, blur out my customer number. We'll go to my products here and I should see my domain. So what I'll do here is I'll wait a couple of minutes because I've had this take up to 20 minutes to even show up, but my domain should show up here. And if I just paste that in here, I can do a search and I still don't have it. So right now it still looks like it's an available domain. So I'll just need to give that a few minutes to connect. Okay, so it took about three minutes for that to connect. Now I can see my domain. So if I just go back to GoDaddy again, if I go to products here, go to my products, and here's the domain. So build pro or proshopdemo.com. Let's go ahead and first, actually we need to go to Heroku right now. So let's go back to Heroku. So we have our domain and the first thing or the next thing that we need is our DNS here. So if we go, if we go back to Heroku, down here in settings. So if I go to settings in my app name, right here we have our environment variables, our build packs, and we're actually gonna add in an SSL certificate. So we'll take care of that after we connect our domain. So here's our default domain. What I wanna do is add in a custom domain. So what I wanna do here is just go ahead and paste that in. And I wanna make sure that's www.proshopdemo.com. So what I'm doing is I'm connecting my domain and then I get this DNS target. And this is what we need for uh, for GoDaddy to connect. So 
This stands for domain name service, I believe, and this is what we're telling GoDaddy to connect to. So we're gonna give GoDaddy this URL right here. I'm gonna copy that. And then when GoDaddy, uh, when we go to ProShopDemo.com, GoDaddy knows where to find this domain. So that's what we're connecting it to. It's kind of like an IP address for our URL. So let's go back to GoDaddy. So we just added the domain. We went to add domain, got that DNS target. I copy that. And in here, I can just go to manage domain or I'll just go to DNS right here. So let's go to DNS because GoDaddy right away is gonna ask me to configure uh, configure with their builder. I don't wanna do anything like that. So uh, we're just gonna go to DNS. And in here, I can leave name servers. Uh, name servers, I'll leave that as is. And I wanna configure the C name. So what I'll do is I'll just get rid of this. I'll get rid of the default settings. And I'm just gonna customize this one right here. So this one, I'll just take this and I'm just gonna paste in that DNS target. So what we just got right here, I can go here, copy that, and it's gonna be some weird URL. We'll paste that in here. And I'm just gonna set this to update every half hour. Let's go ahead and save that. And I also wanna make sure that we're forwarding to my domain here. So let's go ahead and add forwarding. We wanna go ahead and do domain, not the subdomain. And I'm just gonna paste in, or I'll, I'll just write in the domain. So I'll just do www dot pro shop demo dot com so pro shop demo dot com so let's go ahead and save that so I'll save that as a temporary or a permanent redirect and we'll just do forward only let's save that and let's just see so we have that C name the name servers I can leave that and that's being redirected so I'll just give this a few minutes to update. This will also take a bit. Uh, it could take up to half an hour to update. So let's actually change that to HTTPS right there. Let's save it and give it some time. So I'll just pause and then refresh it once it connects. So one thing I can do in this process is to add this to allowed host right now. So if I go here, if I go into my settings.py of my application, so this is on my local machine, what I need to do is update the allowed host here. So right now we're allowing localhost port or this port number right here and then that long domain that Heroku gives us by default. So what I need to do is I need to make sure that this domain is now available inside of my allowed host. So if I just add that in right, right here, so we'll just paste that and that's gonna be www.proshopdemo.com. So that's the allowed host and in theory, I guess I could also add in that without a www. Now, let's see, so we do www proshop.com and then just the name without www so let's save that and while that's all updating while our domain is connecting to Heroku we're just gonna give that a minute here let's go ahead and push this live so I want to push this to my github repo so let's just do get status we can see that we updated settings.py we'll just do get add make sure we added that so status and then we'll just do get let's see oh it looks like it went way down here so let me minimize that so we'll just do git commit and I'll just say added domain. So added domain and then let's just do git push dash u origin master. Okay, so we're just gonna push that and I'm gonna redeploy my application and then we'll see if that connected yet. So let's go ahead and go back here. We're gonna go to deploy and if you've been following either one of the videos either from Udemy or from, uh, from that YouTube video, we use the GitHub method to connect, so let's just go ahead and redeploy that. And then our uh, our domain should be added to allowed host here. So we're just connecting this and making sure that when we go to that domain, that it's allowed to go to our application. So let's go ahead and just give this a minute to deploy. Okay, so that deployed, and now I just wanna make sure everything went fine with my application. So we can see that on proshopdemo.herokuapp.com. And let's just test out our custom domain. So I can go to www.proshopdemo.com. And there we go. So we are now connected with our domain. So we just had to give that a minute. We updated our C name. We added in that forwarding and we connected that inside of settings.py right here or not settings.py, but within settings, we just added that domain and connected that to that DNS target. Now, the next thing I want to do here is make sure that this is a, we have an SSL ticket here. So this is not, I guess it's not necessary. You could just have your domain, domain name like this where it's just HTTP, but we don't have an HTTPS method. Now, this is very uh, useful for SEO. Google now really values sites that have this. And it's also good for things like security on your website. And also if we're adding in payment integration, 
PayPal will simply not work if you're not using HTTPS. So it works locally when we're testing it, but once we deploy a site, PayPal needs an SSL certificate on your website. Otherwise, it's simply not gonna work and those PayPal buttons won't show up here. So let's go ahead and do that one more time. So let's go back in here. So if we go to the domain and we add in an HTTPS, let's try that. It's not allowing us to connect here. So there's a few things we need to do here. Now for Heroku, Heroku by default, if we go to SSL certificates, it lets us know that we automatically get one once we're on a paid dyno. So that's what we're gonna do here. We're gonna upgrade to a paid dyno and then we're gonna go ahead and add that because Heroku is gonna give us that ticket and then we need to do something in our Django code to make sure that this is working. So if I go back here, here's my dyno information. We're on the free tier. If we just get a paid version, I'll just upgrade to $7 a month. Let's go ahead and save it and now we have a paid dyno. So if I go back to settings, now I can, con I can configure my SSL certificate. So now we see SSL is automatically managed. So we could buy a manual certificate and I kept calling that ticket, but it's a SSL certificate. So now it's automatically doing that. We could go to GoDaddy and buy one and connect it, but we might as well use whatever Heroku gives us. So now if we go to our website, if we go ahead and try to refresh that, if we go here, we now see that the site is secure. So we can see this right here. And if I go to the domain directly, if I go to not buildproshop.com, but pro shop demo, so pro shop demo.com, now we see that we always have HTTPS right there and then our domain. So the site is secure and that looks good. So now we're good for SEO ranking, for payment integration. I believe Stripe also won't let you actually integrate payments unless you have an SSL certificate. So I have had an issue in the past before where even when I type in the domain, unless I type in HTTPS directly, uh, we won't be redirected. We're just gonna get this standard HTTP and then uh, we're just gonna have like two versions of our site. So if you run into that issue where it's not redirecting or adding in HTTPS automatically, uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna add some code inside of Django to make sure that our site always redirects to this. So let's go back into our code. If you're running into this issue, go ahead and do this. If you don't have it, everything worked correctly for you. Uh, just go ahead and test out your site. If it doesn't have any issues, uh, you can just ignore this step here. So let's go down in here. So down here, I have this condition and this is checking if our site is live. So right now, if our site is live, we set debug to false and that's all we're doing here. So let's go ahead and uh, I'm just gonna paste in some code here and I'll explain what's going on in a second. So I'll just paste in two lines of code. So what we're doing here is when we're live, I'm just making sure that we have an SSL certificate and that we're redirecting to that. So we're just making sure that the HTTPS method is added. So we're just redirecting to the SSL version of the site here. So this is almost like a, a force redirect. It's just making sure that this is added and that we can't access the site without that. So that's all we're doing here. So if you have that issue, go ahead and add it. And then let's just go ahead and re add or redeploy our site. So we'll just do get status. We see settings.py was updated. We'll just check that make sure that was added. And then I'll just say commit dash M and then force SSL redirect. Okay, get push and then dash U origin and then whatever you called your branch. So my default branch was master. We're just pushing that. So let's go back to our site and I just wanna make sure that we don't have any issues from here. So everything should be good. So we'll go to deploy. We'll deploy that again. Just hit deploy. That's gonna take a second here. So I'll just pause it and then uh, start the video again whenever this is done. Okay, so that was redeployed. Let's go ahead and test that. So we'll just do pro shop demo, not pro shop.heroku app. So we don't wanna use that anymore. This is the, the domain we wanna give out. So pro shop demo.com. So if I go here, we see that we're secure. If I try to take out HTTPS, now that should just be redirected and we added that. So that's it for this video. Uh, I might leave this domain up, I might take it down. Uh, if anything, I'll just redirect it to buildproshop.com. So if you wanna check out the course and actually build out this project, uh, shameless plug here, I'm just gonna pitch that. This is on Udemy, so it's a paid course and we build out this website with Django and React and it's a fully functional e-commerce website. So I hope you check that out. That's in the video description and I hope this video was helpful.